Well, hey guys, happy Sunday. I just woke up and it's pretty early. I haven't had any coffee. I don't know why I'm so energetic. Some mornings I just wake up like this. Anyways, update on the benzene situation. Really, there's no update. Um, but I know a lot of you guys are really worried about it. And here's what I would tell you. If you're super worried, then stick to the list of products that they tested that were found to be negative. Um, but if you have a product that wasn't tested and you're using it, I would continue to use it. I mean, this wasn't tested and I'm using it, but that's my, you know, I feel comfortable and I think you should too. But if you don't, then I would say stick to the list of, I'm not putting this on in any like particular order. Stick to the list of sunscreens that were tested and were found to be negative. And there are plenty from Neutrogena and a lot of brands on there um, that you could choose from. Um, as far as I know, Johnson & Johnson is the only company that came out and said that they were gonna look into it further, which is, you know, kind of okay. I don't know, I honestly think there's some kind of supply chain issue. And I, it makes you wonder, is it just, it, you know, because they tested, not only did they find it in sunscreen, but they also found it in after sun products, which have, you know, after sun products are just another thing to spend money on. They're, you know, by and large useless, like gels and whatnot. Even if you have a sunburn, I wouldn't recommend using those things. They're just laden with fragrance. Anyways, they were found to have benzene, but people laser focus in on the sunscreen because they're convinced that, you know, it's problematic, but, um, Truthfully, it could be in other products as well. Um, that same company uh, or pharmacy also found benzene and hand sanitizers and they were recalled. So I'm hoping that the same chain of events happens. But, you know, I've heard some people comment like <clears throat> the amount of benzene in some of these sunscreens is like the equivalent of what you might be exposed to just by sitting in traffic. And, you know, while that's true to a certain extent, I don't know that I agree with that sentiment because with sunscreen, if you use it correctly, and especially if you're using it like in a, a day outside by the pool or on the beach, you're gonna be putting a, a lot of it to a wide surface area of your body and you're gonna be reapplying it over and over again. Like, yes, sitting in traffic through pollution, <clears throat> we are exposed to benzene, but we're not like, putting our face up in the exhaust pipe and like getting up in there or anything. Um, you, you know, so I, I just don't really think that that is, I don't really think that's a good argument to make because yes, I mean, it's true, but like there's no safe level of benzene in products. And many of these products were found to have very high levels of benzene in them anyways. So, it's a fine line between fear-mongering and the actual reality. I mean, sunscreen gets fear-mongered all the time, but truthfully, this is a reality. Like, this is a carcinogen and there's no safe level of benzene that should be in products. And many of these products have a very high amount of benzene. And sunscreen is a product that when used correctly at two milligrams per centimeter square, that's a lot of surface body surface area that you're covering. And that is, then you're gonna be reapplying it. So it's more than just the concentration. You're getting to, a, a, you know, a, if we had a maximal use amount, that would be helpful, but we don't. But I mean, the idea is that it shouldn't be there in the first place. So I agree with you guys who are concerned about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's problematic, it's worrisome, but you still need to wear sunscreen and protect your skin from the sun. The other thing is to rely on, of course, on sun protective clothing, which you should be doing anyway. Sunscreen is not like a shield of armor, but not to mention sunscreen is used on young children and they have, their skin is more receptive to um, things getting in than, you know, crusty adult skin. And by crusty, I'm pointing at myself, not you guys, you're not crusty. Anyways. Yeah, that's what I can tell you guys about the benzene thing at this point. I mean, I feel comfortable using products. I'm not gonna like stop using the stuff that I have, but that's my choice. I feel safe, I feel comfortable doing that. Um, if you have a product that is on the positive list, I would say definitely stop using it. 
Um, if you are really worried, then choose a sunscreen from the negative list. Speaking of fear mongering, with so much information out there, do you guys find it difficult to get just the facts and not opinions? All you have to do is go to join1440.com slash Dr. Dre to get started for free. The creators of 1440 set out to create a means of providing a view of the latest news updates and happenings in the world without the clickbait and spin, encouraging readers to come to their own conclusions, all while delivering high quality articles in a digestible format. My favorite thing about 1440 is the variety of articles available and the diversity of subjects in each digest. It's separated into need to know, which is the articles that cover the latest and potentially most influential events, in the know, which are articles focused on categories of news so that nothing is left out, in depth, which are more articles that take a more deep dive into a particular topic, and etc., which is just kind of articles covering the slightly unusual news. I find that I'm learning a lot more about the world around me and what's happening in it since subscribing to 1440. So get informed without the BS today. Click the link in my description box and subscribe to 1440 for free. Thank you 1440 for sponsoring today's video. I just pulled up here at Target. I'm gonna head on in. I'm wearing this red sweatshirt. Someone in there may <laughs> mistake me for an employee. But um, I got this on Amazon and it's actually a men's sweatshirt. I think it's Hanes or Jockey. It's really comfortable. The sleeves are just a tiny bit long but not too long where it's like, are you wearing a man's sweatshirt? They're, it's really comfy. Um, so I may order another shade, another color of this. This is like, I don't know, if it's, hopefully it's coming across as red. You know, one funny thing, I've noticed that when I film in my living room with my ring light on, whatever color shirt I'm wearing, it looks totally different on the camera. Like I have a green shirt that you guys think is blue and I have a blue shirt that you guys think is purple. <laughs> Uh, so comment below, does this look red to you? Uh, we're in natural lighting, so presumably it does. But anyways, all that being said, I'm gonna run into the land of the big red eye, Tarje. I'm over here in the vitamin section and I'm kind of salivating over these morning sickness sweets, hard lozenges, mango ginger flavor. They're basically candy, but they look, they look good. Sweet peppermint. The tea sounds good too. Ginger orange tea. Hmm. Nyx has these total control foundation drops. I get questions about adding these to sunscreen. I, the problem with that is you never really know if to, to what extent it will interfere with the sunscreen setting up. Um, but you can certainly use them over your sunscreen once it has dried and absorbed to mask the mask the uh, cast. This is good for correcting, color correcting too. You have like redness and discoloration. Speaking of redness correcting, green is a good one for that. I recommend that. Um, I recommend the uh, Rose Procure Rosicare. It's a moisturizer. It has a green tint. It offers some color correction. I'll link it down below. It's really good for rosacea or post acne redness or just as a moisturizer in general. New. Has anybody heard of this Revolution brand? 5% caffeine plus hyaluronic acid. Hmm. Well, that's actually Looks promising. I need. Yeah. <laughs> Caffeine can temporarily improve the look of dark under eye circles and it also can help with uh, redness as well. 10% niacinamide must be sitting in a vat somewhere that all of these skincare companies just tap into. They also have a 12.5% vitamin C serum. It's got fragrance in it, and it doesn't appear to have ferulic acid or vitamin E, which are important for stabilizing, stabilizing it. There's so many vitamin C serums out here. They just throw a bunch of stuff in a tube and sell it to you. What is this? Pick me not blemish patches. 
See, the problem with putting salicylic acid on one of these acne patches is that whenever you have it under occlusion, it makes it more irritating. What's this overnight buffering lotion? Oh, this is one of those. Pepto Bismol things like Badescu. This actually looks kind of promising. So far, this brand seems to have some decent stuff. It's not too expensive either. Um, here we have a salicylic acid face wash. Hmm. Biotint Multi Action Face Moisturizer SPF 30 by Well People. Smooths with biopeptides. Okay, it's zinc oxide. This looks promising. Has anyone tried this? It's got peptides which can help with moisture, moisturizing the skin. And it looks like it's, there are a few shades here. They also have an under eye concealer. Speaking of dark circles. Hmm. Don't think that would look too flattering on me. It kind of looks like a bell from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> uh, ooh, flashy. It's kind of cute. Ooh, I like these shoes and sandals. I'm here on the mannequin. I'm in here in Big Lots and I'm loving the fact that they have red, white, and blue Swedish fish and Sour Patch Kids. A gummy wiener, anybody? <laughs> also a gummy burger. Those are kind of cute, actually. I also have a gummy taco. They have gummy sushi. <laughs> So I'm back and I swung into Sprouts, of course. I could not resist it. So I got a few items I'll show you guys. For after my run today, I got a Blue Raspberry Ultima Replenisher Stick. I love these. I got another thing of the Hope Hummus, the black garlic flavor. This is still an Ibotta rebate and it's a coupon at Sprouts. So snag that. I really like this black garlic flavor. And I got another bag of these Persian cucumbers. They are really good. Um, this Spice Hunter, salt-free seasonings. I had gotten the steak and chop last time. It was really good. So I decided to give this chef shake a try because it's got black pepper, onion, garlic, carrots, orange peel, tomato, celery seed, red pepper, parsley, basil, marjoram, bay leaf, lemon oil, crystallized lemon, uh, oregano, thyme, citric acid, savory, rosemary, cumin, mustard, and coriander. <laughs> That's quite a bit. I imagine that's gonna be good on veggies. Speaking of veggies, these bright, fresh microgreens are delicious. I got the cilantro last time. Decided to give micro broccoli a try, as well as micro arugula. I love arugula. Got two more of my Coco Yo's. These are so good. They are worth every penny. Highly recommend them. These are still on Ibotta, the Flow Alkaline Spring Water, so I got two, because the rebate is for two. I also got another thing of this Good Karma Flax Milk Plus Protein. I highly recommend this. If you like making smoothies, but you don't wanna deal with protein powder, but you wanna add a little protein, one serving has six grams of protein, which isn't a ton, but it's just, I don't know. It's very smooth and um, I don't know, it's just, I, I like it. I haven't actually had the vanilla flavor yet. I imagine it's not too different from the um, regular. Same thing with almond milk unsweetened plain almond milk versus unsweetened vanilla almond milk i mean i really i can't tell the difference like i would put unsweetened vanilla almond milk in a savory dish nobody would know the difference in my opinion <laughs> i recently tried these the zevia teas and they're actually really good um they're sweetened with stevia so i got the passion fruit flavor and i also got blood orange this one is a hibiscus tea so it's caffeine free but this is earl gray so it has caffeine in it and then i got two of these uh joseph's pita breads i actually like these with the with the hope hummus i like to take these and slice them up into triangles and pop them in the air fryer for a little while 
They turn into pita chips, and I like to have them with the Hope Hummus. Just finished my Runzo, and the Blue Raspberry Ultima was good. I highly recommend that. I haven't had a flavor of blue, of blue. I haven't had a flavor of the Ultima sticks yet that I have not loved. I have a, little, a nice little collection of books here uh, that I have read. Standing on top is my Blythe doll, Margot. I need to change her outfit. I need to get her something for summer, like, I don't know, a little sundress and a sun hat, I think would be cute. So last night I did in fact uh, sign up for Audible again, and I started listening to a book, uh, which I've already forgotten the title. Are you, is anybody else like really bad at remembering titles of books that they're reading? Especially if it's an audio book, because I'm not actually looking at it, uh, you kind of forget the title if it's not like a popular title or one that you had in mind to listen to, but this book is good. It's about um, Las Vegas. It takes place in Las Vegas, I should say. And it's kind of interesting because the people live there, but they're not like, you know, they're just, they're not, it's not a book about Las Vegas where like people are going there to visit. People actually live there and like, it's just kind of interesting. I always wonder what it'd be like to live in Las Vegas. I mean, I'm sure many of you guys live in Las Vegas. <clears throat> if it gets like annoying tourists and, and people coming to visit or if it's just kind of over in the distance and you ignore it. But in this book, some of the people in the community work at the casinos. I've always thought I would like living in uh, Nevada or Las Vegas. Comment below if you live there or have lived there. Is it a good place to live? Um, I know mean, it's like super dry, like a desert. I don't think I would like that. I like the humidity as much as I complain about it. I'm going in with my strawberry chia pudding and the delicious oh so thick Vanilla Cocoyo, Cocoyo. This stuff is so good. And it's hibiscus tea time. <laughs> so in addition to topical retinoid and aggressive sun protection, the other thing that actually can have an anti-aging effect that is legitimate, well-established, science-based, is HRT in postmenopausal women. This is something I often forget about whenever I'm saying like, the only thing that can really make a difference in your skin is aggressive sun protection and Retin-A. But for postmenopausal women, um, going on HRT, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, certainly can soften the skin, improve skin hydration, and firm the skin because what happens with menopause as we get wiser is that estrogen levels start to decline and what ends up happening is that the cells down in the skin they kind of feed off of some of that estrogen that's what provides a stimulus to produce uh, collagen and that is one reason why we lose collagen with age and you really can notice more prominent wrinkling after menopause. And so for women who are a candidate for HRT, that is definitely something that can boost up collagen production uh, for sure, simply because it's replacing that signal. Um, it will not correct photo damage, sun damage, however. It really just steps in for what is lost from menopause, a signal. So that definitely can make a difference. It's not, it's only for women though who are postmenopausal, you know, menopause, perimenopause, postmenopausal women. If you are, you know, a menstruating female, HRT is not gonna make a difference. If you are a male, uh, uh, estrogen based, you know, female HRT is not gonna make a difference. If you are a male, um, uh, TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, is not going to, uh, you know, have an anti-aging outcome. But yeah, you know, I often neglect to mention that because it's not really on the forefront. Most of you guys are looking to prevent, like, photo aging, and the majority of skin aging is related to sun exposure, and then of course, uh, pollution and environmental stressors, poor sleep, all those things. But don't underestimate, um, you know, when you go through menopause, when women go through menopause, 
that decline in estrogen, it affects all, you know, a lot and it also affects the skin. Women who are candidates for it do end up noticing an improvement in their skin. But that is not a reason to go on HRT. That is definitely, the decision to go on HRT for women is definitely something you have to go over in detail with your gynecologist to discuss the risks to benefits. Because some women simply are not a candidate. Some women, the ri they're gonna be more risks and they're not you know, gonna wanna um, assume those risks. But for many women, they go on HRT and they feel so much better. Uh, I'm going to wrap up the vlog here, you guys. Thank you so much for coming along with me today. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Don't forget to check out 1440. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.